Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and if you are a fan of all things sparkly, just wait till I show you this crushed collection from C and Designer Dips. It has like all the crushed diamond vibes and it is so beautiful. And these are all in neutral colors so they will pair with just about anything. I just wanna show you a couple of the jars because oh my goodness, pictures and videos just do not do this justice. You have to see these in person because they are truly breathtaking. And here are the colors all swatched out. I will give you a warning if you do use these that these micro shimmers fly everywhere. So once you open the jars, do not breathe or else you'll well you'll be covered in glitter anyway, but so worth it because how gorgeous are all these colors. So I can't wait. Let's get into this mani. After staring at the swatches for a while, I felt inspired to do a baby boomer style mani, which I haven't done before using the colors Iconic and Sassy. These are both from the Crushed collection. So this is going to be like a Crushed Diamond style Baby Boomer Manny, and I'm super excited about that. I'll be using my C and Designer Dip Stip Liquids as well as some gels at the end. And for the Baby Boomer, I'm going to need some eyeshadow brushes for my tap ombre. So I've got these two brushes from Amazon. I think it's a Wet n Wild and an Elf eyeshadow brush. But we're going to get straight into this Manny, and like I said before, these glitters fly everywhere. So unfortunately for me, the air conditioning was running and I sit kind of not directly below my vent, but very close to my vent. So the micro glitters went flying everywhere. But like I said, it was well worth the cleanup. To do my baby boomer nail, I'm going to start with a thin, even layer of dip base to my entire nail. I want to make sure I'm not getting any on my skin. And I do have to work a little bit quicker because I do find the C and Designer Dips dip base is a little bit of a quicker dry time. But you'll see I don't have any challenges with it. I just have to work a little bit quicker. So I'm going to dip my first eyeshadow brush into Iconic. And then I'm going to start tapping that at my free edge. So my fingers pointed a little bit upwards. I'm concentrating the most powder at the tip. And then I'm letting the excess powder fall down towards the middle of my nail. I'm turning my nail to make sure I get my sidewalls as well. And then once I've got enough coverage, I'm going to tap my finger downwards to remove any of that excess powder. And then I'm going to dip my second eyeshadow brush into Sassy. And I'm going to tap that on the remainder of the wet dip base. And I'm also going to overlap what I've done with Iconic just in case there are any wet dip base spots there. And that's going to help provide like a seamless transition. And you know, the micro the micro flake shimmers help that's a tongue twister help as well they help cover like any imperfections where like if you're working with solids you can really notice a difference but I love that the shimmers kind of hide that and they just kind of blend beautifully together so I'm just cleaning up my cuticle area making sure I remove any of the excess product and so here's how it looks and just look at that shimmer I still feel like this video doesn't do them justice until you see them in person so I'm going to do the same for all five fingers. I'm going to walk you through my middle finger again. So I'm going to apply a thin, even layer of dip base to my entire nail. And then once I've got enough coverage, I'm going to go ahead and dip my first eyeshadow brush into Iconic. I'm going to point my finger a little bit upwards. It doesn't have to be like vertical, but I just want to point it a little bit upwards so that the powders can kind of fall naturally. So I dip my brush into Iconic and then I tap at my free edge more towards the tip. And then I let the excess powder fall more towards the middle of my nail for that more seamless transition, making sure I'm turning my nail to get the side of my nails covered as well. Then I'll tap off the excess powder downwards, dip my brush into Sassy and cover the rest of the wet dip base with Sassy, making sure I overlap Iconic as well just in case there is any excess wet dip base that I didn't cover with Iconic. Now since I'm terrible at descriptions, I'm going to read you these color descriptions from C and Designer Dips because I don't want to misrepresent them. So Iconic, I'm using it as my white for my baby boomer, but it's not actually a white. So Iconic is a very pale, warm toned pink with silver and champagne micro flake shimmers. Whereas Sassy, which is the pink I'm using, is a medium to light, cool toned bubblegum pink with silver and champagne micro flake shimmers. So they both have the same shimmers in them, which make them blend so beautifully together. 
If you're wondering what I'm doing my ombre on top of, this is the Controlled Chaos from Chaos Concepts. So it is a 3D printed disc type item and it is my favorite thing to use for excess powders. So it catches any spillage if I have an extra full jar and I want to dip directly into it and I love it because it is a flexible item and so I don't know if you can notice off to the right of it it's got this little lip kind of spout area so once I'm done I can kind of fold the disc in half and then dust off my excess powder into my jar and it just falls right out and it's just so easy for cleanup that way so because these are two different powder colors I'll probably dump this back into my dump jar rather than each one of the jars because they'll be mixed colors but it just makes super easy cleanup to catch the excess powder that I'm doing and I don't have to worry about trying to tap over these small jars of dip powder while I'm finishing up the rest of my nails, because it's all a similar process, I'm just going to chat at you a little bit. So if you're curious about the difference between a French manicure and a baby boomer nail, because they do use the same colors, I've done a French manicure before, but this is my first time ever doing a baby boomer, although it's not a traditional baby boomer because of the micro shimmers, I'm still calling it a baby boomer. So with a French manicure, you have a very crisp, defined smile line, whereas a baby boomer, you can see I've got that ombre method going where it's kind of a blend of the two colors rather than a crisp line. So that's really the biggest difference between the two. I don't know if I really have a preference. I think they're both really beautiful. But the other thing I was curious about is why in the world is it called a baby boomer nail? So best I could find is that this was a popular style back in the 1940s amongst the baby boomer generation. So that's kind of why they called it the baby boomer nail and it kind of stuck. So just in case you're curious and wanted to geek out a little bit with me. The other thing I wanted to mention, which I've kind of been avoiding, well, I don't know if avoiding is the right word, but I'm kind of like in this sh state of shock, kind of, is this really happening, pinch me type moment, is that thanks to your amazing support, there are over a thousand of you subscribed to my channel, and I still cannot believe it. So thank you so much for being here with me, for supporting me. I cannot explain how much it means to me. So... With that being said, I do have something planned for a thousand subscriber giveaway. Uh, it's still in the works, more to come soon, but I felt like I should, I should mention it. I should not ignore it any longer. So once again, thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoy my videos. I hope they're helpful. If there's anything you'd like to see, please feel free to reach out because this is, you know, as much here for you as for me. So let me know what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, any suggestions. I am happy to hear it. I know that wasn't much of a break for me talking to you, but I wanted to hop back on and explain to you my process for my second layer. So I dusted off the excess powder now that all my dip base is dry. So for my second layer, I'm gonna go in with a thin, even layer of dip base to my entire nail. I don't know if it looks like I'm putting on a lot of dip base or not, but my bottle is almost empty, so I'm getting very little dip base. So I'm constantly having to re-dip my brush back into the jar just to get enough dip base to cover my entire nail. So once I have finally have that covered, I'm gonna reverse the order of my powders. So I'm gonna start with Sassy. I'm gonna dip that brush into my jar of Sassy. I'm gonna point my nail downwards this time and tap towards my cuticle line and let the powders fall downwards towards my free edge, towards like the middle of my nail, towards the free edge. And then I'm going to flip my hand upside down, tap off the excess powder. I'll dip my second brush into Iconic, and then I will tap Iconic towards my free edge and then let it fall towards the middle of the nail. And same thing, covering a little bit of Sassy just in case there are any spots that I missed. And this is gonna provide you the best 
seamless transition for an ombre. So whether it's a baby boomer or any other kind of ombre, I always like to reverse the order of my colors for my second layer. And I'm only going to do two layers for this because you saw with the first layer, that was plenty of coverage. That was full coverage. I didn't need to do my second layer, but out of habit, I'm doing a second layer. So I forgot my train of thought. Oh, so if you were doing a third layer, you would do the same thing and reverse the order again. Start with iconic and then go into sassy. So that was a whole lot. So let me stop talking and then let you watch the rest of my process for my second layer. Once I finish with all my layers, I'm going to go ahead and cap everything in clear using my CN Designer Dips Ultra Clear 2020. I want to make sure I'm capping everything in clear because I don't want to risk filing and buffing away the design I did for the Baby Boomer nails. Once my dip base is fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good scrub with a stiff scrub brush. This is going to remove any of the excess clear and that's going to eliminate any gradiness or cloudiness. And then once I've got all that scrubbed away, I'm going to go ahead and apply a generous amount of activator to all my nails. And then I'm going to wait at least two minutes until my dip powder is hardened before I go in and file and buff off camera. I did a little bit of filing and buffing off camera, but these powders were super smooth, so it was super quick and easy. And I did decide I wanted to do just a little bit of nail art, so I've got this black tie gel art liner collection from C and Designer Dips. It's their Hema Free Gel Art Liners that they recently released, and I have been dying to use this liner. So this is L7 as part of the collection, and it is this beautiful hollow glitter and sorry I got guess I got overexcited and hit the camera so I'm going to just do a little bit of a little flower on my ring finger just because I wanted to use this liner so badly so you've seen me draw flowers before so I'm just going to do five dots in kind of like a circle and then I will take a thinner liner brush and just kind of draw them 
tapering them towards the center to kind of draw those flower petals. And because you know I can't help myself, I decided I was gonna make this extra, extra blingy and I decided to add a little gem to the center of my flower. Um, I'm not sure where I got this box of gems from, but I thought it was super cute in the middle of the flower. So the last thing I'm gonna do, because I, I guess I was just feeling extra, <laughs> extra in this set is, I wanna apply some gems to the cuticle line of my middle finger. But before I do that, I'm gonna apply a layer of gel base to all my nails because I'm just gonna go ahead and top coat everything with gel top coat. So this is the Hema Free Gel Base from Seaton Designer Diffs and I'll also be using the Hema Free Gel Top Coat. So I'm just applying a thin even layer to all my nails making sure I'm not getting my skin and I forgot to do this before I applied my gem to my ring finger so I'm gonna have to be really careful because you don't want to apply anything over your gem or else it could dull the sparkle of it. So I'm just very carefully going around that little gem that I have on the center of my flower and trying to apply the gel base to the rest of my nail. The reason I'm going with gel base first is because your dip powder is too smooth. So if you went directly on your dip powder with gel top coat, it would peel off. So the gel base gives your gel top coat something to grip onto, to adhere to, to prevent peeling. I went ahead and applied my gems and finished off with gel top coat. So now that my mani is all complete, I'm gonna go ahead and rehydrate my cuticles. And of course I'm using my scales of mermaid cuticle oil. This is in the scent You Bring Me Home, which is such a beautiful classic scent. So I thought it went well with the baby boomer nails. So I'm gonna make sure I rub that in really well on my skin and my sidewalls, making sure I'm getting underneath my nails as well. And then we are all set. So here we are with the finished look. What do you think? My first time to a baby boomer, so be kind, but I love the way it turned out. And of course, you know, I had to add a little bit of extra because I couldn't help myself, but how beautiful is this crust collection? All of these colors have this beautiful micro flake shimmer that is just so beautiful. I can't wait to use the rest of it, but like I said, be careful when you're using them because they are super light and they will fly everywhere, but you know, everything will be pretty and sparkly afterwards. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.